morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar with Fenex Resources. I'm Danica Warburton. I'm the principal at Investability, and we've recently had the pleasure of um, assisting Fenex with their investor relations. So we've got a lot of people on the call today. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to join, and thank you as well for all the questions that got sent through. I'm going to um, stop rambling and hand over to MD Rob Briley to give a short presentation. Um, he's going to then hand over to Chairman John Wellborn and then we'll open it up to Q&A. So without further ado, I'll hand over to you, Rob. Uh, uh, thank you, Danica. I'll just uh, share the screen if I can. Um, yeah, good morning all um, for our investor webinar on our March 2022 uh, quarterly result. Um, for anyone that doesn't know what Fenex do, we're a high margin, high grade Australian iron ore miner. Um, we believe we've got a distinct infrastructure advantage to underpin expansion and drive growth. Um, as mentioned, we've got a premium product. Our, our reserve grade is well above 64% iron. We've got, uh, we own our own uh, trucking fleet in a joint venture, and we also own our own port infrastructure, which gives us um, leverage um, to, to look at growth opportunities in the Geraldton area. And we've also got a skilled team with proven ability to execute. And we've, I'll talk a little bit more about our uh, growth strategy of uh, exploration, expansion and acquisition later on in the uh, presentation. Um, this is more about the quarterly result, which we just released on the ASX platform this morning and best quarterly result as far as generating net operating uh, cash flow ever. We've only been going for 15 months, but uh, it was quite a, um, a great result given that iron ore prices aren't as high as what they were for most of, um, uh, of the first three quarters of uh, calendar 2021. We generated 33 cash flow for the period, and that was despite a 17% drop in sales because our, our scheduled late March shipment uh, was caught up with inclement weather and uh, we, it didn't sail until the 2nd of April. So, so that, uh, that shipment will now be a sale in the uh, June quarter rather than the March quarter. Around $7.6 million of cash was also generated from our, um, from our um, hedging contracts. And whilst the iron ore index price has uh, increased uh, quite a bit, our uh, hedge book is still in the money and it's still delivering what we want it to deliver, which is some price certainty and allows us to run a stable business uh, without having to react to, uh, to market volatility, uh, particularly in the short term. Market conditions were more favourable in the March quarter than in the December quarter. The iron ore dollars um, in the previous quarter. And we also had a bit of relief with the sea freight price, um, which fell to, uh, around about 20% down to $26.70 per dry metric tonne um, equivalent. So it was, a, it was um, those factors equated to a, a financial benefit for Fenex of uh, around about $39 US per tonne, uh, which equates to about $53 Australian per tonne, hence a decent um, financial performance in our cash generation. Please, uh, pleasingly, we also had a, um, uh, our cash costs fell um, and uh, were around about $81.72 per wet metric tonne shipped, uh, which was a, a very good result in the current um, circumstance. I think the Phoenix team and its key service providers are doing a great job of efficiently running the business. We're not the, the, um, the lowest cash cost producer, but we are producing and generating decent cash flow with very little capital investment. Um, and uh, you know, it's uh, from the the work that's been done from the whole team, including Macca, Phoenix New Hall, and uh, Champion Bay Electrical down at the port. Um, and we've done that safely, uh, with no uh, instance from a safety point of view. We've done it environmentally consciously, with no environmental incidents, and we've also done it um, with due respect to the heritage values of the area that we uh, that we mine in. Um, as you can see, our, uh, I mentioned before, our export, um, there was only five shipments totaling around about 295,000 wet metric tonnes delivered. Uh, nearly two thirds of it were, uh, were fines and one third of it lump. That should 
change a little bit um, from the current quarter. So you can see from our product price, we averaged $132.83 per dry metric tonne, that's FOB. So that's equivalent to $158.49 per dry metric tonne CFR. And given our average price for the quarter was $141.60, you can see quite a substantial premium, um, which sort of uh, reversed some of the issues we had last quarter. Um, we also continue to deliver on our hedge contract, and I've mentioned uh, that we yielded some $7.6 million of cash from that. Um, looking forward, the iron ore price remains positive and supportive. Um, it's currently average over, averaging over $150 US per tonne in, in April. It's early days, um, but that's, uh, that's a, a good sign. Um, we've also got the early April ship, which has been banked, and we should uh, return to selling at least six shipments for this quarter. Um, now, barring a, uh, a rapid deterioration in market conditions, that is iron ore price, um, ocean freight prices, Aussie dollar, or a force majeure uh, event this quarter, we're in pretty good nick to sometime during the end of this quarter to be able to be a more definitive on our dividend and what that may well be. Um, but certainly, I know we've got a lot of questions about dividends, um, and really we want to get through this quarter knowing that we're still in a healthy position um, before we uh, communicate that to our shareholders. Lastly, I just want to, uh, John in particular as chairman has, has, has made a, uh, a major uh, impact on, on developing our, our strategy. Uh, we've got a, a portfolio growth strategy, three-pronged. Um, first of all, exploration. We will look to incrementally grow through exploration near mine. We've significantly increased our, our footprint near the mine through the Scorpion um, acquisition of their 100% of the iron ore rights to those tenements. And uh, we plan to kick off our first pass exploration activity sometime this quarter, pending heritage approvals. Secondly, Phoenix is looking to expand by increasing the production rate at its, uh, at its existing area. We must weigh that up against the backdrop of what is a, a long delivery timeframe environment. Um, so uh, we, we're currently maxed out on production at the moment from capacity wise, particularly with our trucking fleet, but we are looking to, to increase that incrementally as we go through. Um, also, lastly, we're looking at regional acquisitions um, through leveraging our existing infrastructure. I mentioned before how we own our own haulage fleet partially through the joint venture. We have a, a great port infrastructure. We're one of a few um, iron ore producers that actually own their own port infrastructure. And we've got a strong balance sheet. So we intend to try and apply the Phoenix model outside the region as well. Um, and what is the Phoenix model? It's basically the, uh, the timely and cost-effective development of what are relatively small scale, but high value projects to generate shareholder wealth. So now I'd just like to hand over to uh, John. Um, we'd, we'd like to um, some commentary on strategy and governance. Thanks a lot, Rob. Uh, and welcome to everyone uh, on this webinar. Uh, and, and thanks to you, Danica, and the team at Investability. Um, it's uh, great to see the improvement, and I'm sure shareholders can join me in uh, um, congratulating Rob and the team uh, for what's been a really strong quarter. And uh, the format and information we've put out today in the quarterly activities report and the presentation you're seeing uh, is a good improvement and uh, allows us to communicate what is a really exciting story. Um, uh, Rob's covered the, the key highlights of the quarter, but I wanted to add as chairman uh, and on behalf of the board, my congratulations to him and all of uh, the Phoenix team and our partners, as he mentioned. Uh, we're operating in a very difficult um, and volatile iron ore price environment. And uh, so far this year, Phoenix has shown uh, that we're on top of all of the issues of running a Midwest iron ore producer. 
uh, and we're opportunistically harvesting a lot of cash and that creates uh, a great opportunity. Uh, I joined the board uh, late last year and uh, if you're listening in as a shareholder, uh, I can tell you, you should join me in being really proud of this operation. I've had a, the, the time now to have a good look at uh, our mining operations at Iron Ridge, uh, a uh, unique high grade premium product uh, and a really well set up mine and uh, particularly wanted to focus on um, the safety record, the environment, environmental performance of our team uh, and the respect we've got for heritage, all the key aspects of that mining operation. Uh, I'm confident that we've got the, the best bulk haulage road fleet uh, in the country. And I think we're going to, we're seeing the benefits of that uh, in the lower C1 cash cost um, rec recorded uh, in this quarter, uh, representing our profit share uh, as part of our cost performance uh, from that 50-50 uh, Phoenix Newhall joint venture. Uh, and I'm, I'm really excited about the further opportunities uh, that that uh, a haulage performance and the technology we're employing there uh, provides both for our existing operations and also for future opportunities in the Midwest and elsewhere. Um, and uh, at the Port of Geraldton, uh, we've got a unique uh, advantage by owning our own shed uh, and uh, load infrastructure. Uh, it's a really neat operation and, and I'm, I'm uh, delighted to be a part of the company. Uh, the performance this quarter shows that we're generating very strong cash in the current iron ore price environment. Uh, the board's approach to hedging uh, provides support that we're going to continue to run a profitable business in the Midwest. Uh, and uh, as this page in the presentation outlines, uh, exploration, expansion, acquisition, uh, we're focusing on how we can add further value to shareholders. And uh, Rob mentioned dividend policy. We're committed to that. Uh, just a reminder to shareholders that uh, we that policy states that we will pay between 50 and 80% uh, of uh, profit generated uh, to shareholders as an annual dividend subject to the availability of franking credits. So that policy remains in place. Uh, and as Rob mentioned, we'll be doing our very best to have a strong fourth quarter, which will put us as a board uh, in a very good position to make a decision on what that annual dividend will be. And it'll obviously be uh, a result of uh, the final year, full year numbers. Uh, as well as available options uh, in terms of our growth strategy going forward. I am uh, also excited, as Rob mentioned, about the expiration potential. We're going to see that evolving during this quarter. Uh, uh, it's not a huge investment, but it could be a very important investment uh, given um, the mine life we've got left at Iron Ridge, the high grade product and the uh, uh, huge opportunities there are to add resources uh, near mine. Uh, with that said, I'm very much looking forward to any questions shareholders have. Um, we're a very open company. Uh, it's an easy story to get to know, and I think there's a lot of value uh, there for shareholders. So look forward to your input. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, John. And we'll open it up now to Q&A. So thank you for everyone who sent questions in uh, previously. We'll kick off with some of those. Um, firstly, on the quarterly, and perhaps uh, Rob could answer this one if we can share the screen. Uh, so Sam has asked, uh, Phoenix has generated 33 million of operating uh, net operating cash flow this quarter, and that was driven by the stronger iron ore prices and decrease in shipping costs. In the quarterly, you mentioned you expect to build on this solid position during the quarter, during the current quarter. Will you look to increase production to benefit from this environment? Uh, yeah, good question. Um, and I suppose I covered it a little bit in my briefing in that basically we are almost maxed out as far as haulage capacity goes at the moment. We'd love to produce more. Um, uh, and certainly we have some capacity at the mine and, and with the crushing and screening circuit there. But, you know, the, uh, unfortunately, in this current environment, particularly with heavy uh, manufacturing, um, the lead time between getting extra trucks and trailers uh, is, you know, 12 months plus, you know, probably 18 months more realistically. So, um, you know, we're, we're doing the best we can. Um, I mentioned before in the quarterly about the, the uh, addition of the A trailer, which has actually increased our capacity of uh, our haulage um, fleet that has that A trailer from about 123 tonne per, per prime mover to 140 tonne. So that's been beneficial, but, um, you know, we're doing the best we can and uh, shareholders should rest assured that we're trying as, uh, 
um, as much as we can to squeeze uh, uh, as much production as we can. Okay, fantastic. Um, we've got some questions on the future plans uh, for the company. So I might ask these of John. Uh, Craig has asked, what is the company planning to do with its cash reserves other than uh, pay dividends to deliver maximum value for shareholders? It's a good question. Um, we've spoken uh, around the strategic review we're doing, looking at those sort of opportunities. And I think uh, the presentation we've released today, along with the quarterly, uh, provides some information on what that future growth uh, plan might look like. And uh, we've specified there are three elements to it. The first one is obviously expiration. Uh, and we've got two elements to that. Obviously, the large ground package we picked up with the Scorpion uh, transaction, 100% iron ore rights over more than 300 square kilometres. Uh, and there are three uh, high priority targets that we're looking to get to there. And uh, we're also going to do some uh, drilling subject to heritage clearance uh, on possible expansions of the existing iron ore uh, at Iron Ridge. Uh, and so they're things that shareholders should be aware of in the near term uh, as potential mine life extensions. Uh, then there's also expansion as the second limb of that growth strategy uh, that has two aspects. It's um, production based uh, as well as looking at our footprint uh, and that leads on to acquisition where uh, Phoenix is a fantastic example as Rob has mentioned in a low capital fast pathway to what is proving to be very cash generative production. Uh, um, unusually rare in the mining world. It's a great example of uh, a company that's rewarding shareholders and we're looking to build further reward in terms of share price appreciation, which we believe will come uh, from demonstrating that growth agenda. So we're going to, in a disciplined way, look at opportunities to expand our footprint in the Midwest and potentially uh, apply what has been a very successful business model and uh, you know, the application of low capital uh, for highly cash flow generative opportunities and, and a team that can deliver on those uh, is something that um, we are looking to use to build further benefits for shareholders. And uh, I look forward to outlining those uh, uh, actions on those elements of our growth strategy as we deliver them. Perfect. Yeah, so do we. Uh, so um, on the dividends, Gary and actually various people have asked, um, when will the company be paying a dividend again this year? Uh, can you give an indication of when that will be and how much? <laughs> no. Look, you know, we, we, uh, we've got 6,000 shareholders. So, you know, although we're a small company, we've got a huge involvement. And uh, that's fantastic. Uh, you know, as I said earlier, I think it's a really exciting company and it's got a big opportunity. And that's why we're all here at Phoenix. Uh, and a lot of those shareholders, I feel like there might be 4,000 of them asking you the dividend question, Danica. Uh, all I can say is reiterate what we have. The board have committed to a policy of paying 50% to 80% uh, of uh, cash flow uh, profit uh, on an annual basis subject to franking credits. Uh, we're expecting to have franking credits available. We're generating good cash. Uh, shareholders should be able to work out what that dividend might look like. Um, but obviously we have to wait until the full year numbers responsibly and, uh, and then uh, make that decision based on uh, you know, the position of the company at that time. But uh, obviously Rob and the team are working hard so that we can continue to pay what was a very positive uh, dividend position last year. Uh, and uh, shareholders should be confident. We're obviously going to um, declare a full year dividend. Um, and so that'll be paid. Uh, it'll be declared in August and paid shortly afterwards. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, John. Um, another one for Rob on the infrastructure advantage that you spoke to in the presentation. Um, can you please provide an update on the Phoenix haulage, new haul, sorry, haulage joint venture? Specifically, what are some of the advantages over other Midwest trucking um, operators? Uh, yeah, um, well, the, the biggest advantage, my belief, is that because we entered this joint venture, the owner of the mine was a partial owner of the fleet. That allowed us to finance um, brand new fleet, basically. So to have brand new state-of-the-art Volvo and Mack trucks, to have brand new, proudly WA-manufactured um, uh, state-of-the-art trailer combinations, um, and, and to have them financed quite, you know, uh, at a quite reasonable level, so low equity values, high debt covenant, coverage, um, really gave us brand new gear, so which gives you efficiency 
But what it also does is it helps to attract and retain drivers. Um, so uh, the ability to do that was pivotal in, in um, getting this operation um, up and running and getting probably some of the lowest haulage costs that we could possibly get. At the very early stage, before we even got into production, we identified around about 60% of our costs were going to be tied up in road haulage. That's remained the case. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to actually have control of your own destiny and to have a good, efficient fleet with um, drivers that want to work for you uh, has been real beneficial. Okay, uh, we've got some questions on the um, the premium that you're getting for your product. Um, asked in various ways, so basically I'll read this one from Colin that says, is um, FEX actually getting a premium iron ore price for its high quality iron ore above the daily iron ore spot price? If so, approximately how much extra um, are you getting? Yeah, um, really interesting question. I could take 20 minutes to answer this because it's, it, look, the, the iron ore price, jumps around a fair bit and when we sell and what price we get is determined about when when we provisionally price it when we get the final price so um, but historically we do get a premium um, again that bounces around because some of that premium is tied to the lump premium and the lump premium has been as low as two dollars a ton and as high as forty dollars a ton in the last six months so it bounces around a fair bit um, we also have um, uh, a lot of um, pricing points along the way, um, which makes it uh, difficult to adjust. But I think history will tell us, uh, tell you that we get a slight premium on the price for every tonne we sell. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I'll add to that, Danica. Um, yeah. Rob mentioned earlier, you know, the difference obviously between CFR, which is a China landed price, mm -hmm. and the FOB pricing that we often talk about. And, and some of our marketing agreements drive off, which is FOB being free on board at Geraldton. Uh, so when we talk about, for example, $140 a tonne price FOB, that's that's the price we're receiving at Geraldton. Uh, and it equates, as Rob said, to a price landed in China, add on about $20 shipping of around 160. So I think often people are hearing that we quote an FOB price and they're comparing it to uh, what they see on the TV, which is a, or read in the newspaper, which is a China price. Um, so that's one difference that I think might create some confusion or some of those questions. And as Rob said, uh, we, we're benefited at Iron Ridge by a premium product and We've got two marketing agreements and we monitor those very closely to make sure that we're getting the premium that that product deserves. And, and uh, um, I think, you know, Rob, I think it's bit sort of around 10 to $15 a tonne on, on uh, current market in some cases for lump, um, as well as, uh, you know, and, and then offset by the fines price, um, uh, depending on which benchmark you're using. Um, but all effort is made to make sure that, that we're getting the best price we can for what is a great product. Okay. And can you tell me a bit more about the hedging as well? Um, uh, Stuart Foster, thank you for sending through a few questions. Nice to hear from you. Um, what are your thoughts on what the hedging will be for October? After, uh, sorry, once the October hedge is used up? Oh, well, we, we're looking at the market all the time at the moment, and we're currently... Um, doing a review of our hedging policy as well. Um, and that's coming to a conclusion soon. Um, and uh, hopefully that will that will uh, result in us being able to add a little bit more to the uh, uh, to when our, um, our hedging expires. So I suppose it's watch this space at the moment, um, but we, we have great, um, uh, great conduit into the market there and we intend to use that um, uh, in an opportunistic way um, when things align and our hedging strategy has been reviewed um, and uh, formalised. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, there's quite a few questions on that one, so that's good. Um, there's another one uh, on pricing, I guess. Uh, please elaborate on how the quotation period price adjustment works, uh, as this has negatively impacted the average selling price of our iron ore in Q2. Yeah, it did. Uh, it did negatively influence in Q2, and then, of course, it positively influenced in in uh, in um, our March quarter as well. So it swinged to roundabouts. Essentially, um, 
to keep it relatively basic, because you could write a book on this, is that when you when you sell a shipment of iron ore, you get a provisional price, um, which is normally two weeks before that ship uh, arrives in Geraldton. But that's only a provisional price. And the final price is normally uh, uh, what's called a M plus one. So the month after it, it sails from Geraldton, we'll get the average price for that month. So for instance, we sold a ship, unfortunately it was supposed to be the end of uh, March, it was April. Um, the, we, will, we got provisionally priced in, um, uh, you know, in mid-March, and but we'll get a final price, which will be the average price in May. So that's what a QP adjustment is. Uh, it's quite common in most metals, certainly iron ore, uh, but also in base metals as well. Um, and we just have to roll with the punches with that. Sometimes they're positive, sometimes they're, they're negative. Um, you know, we had $4.8 million of negative QP adjustments in the December quarter, and we had $5 million um, of positive QP adjustments on the current quarter. And I think we flagged that in the previous quarterly, saying that we anticipated that would reverse or at least go close to reversing. Okay, I've got some spicy tax questions for you now. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what it, uh, Robert has asked, has the company's tax for FY21 been paid? Um, I guess I'll just, I'll, I'll throw these all in at the same time. Yeah. What is the situation regarding tax payments for 2022? Are they quarterly, monthly instalments? And um, what's likely proven needed for the nine months to date? Well, you can remember uh, all that and that's really one. Yeah, it's, it, it's no problem. It's actually a, a pertinent question, particularly when it relates to our dividend policy, because frank and credits, you know, our dividend policy clearly says to the extent it could be fully franked. So it's a great question. Um, and in summary, no, we haven't paid. Uh, cash tax yet. Um, we're, a, we're a first year taxpayer um, and our tax return has been lodged just recently. So we will actually pay around about $10 million of, of cash tax in May. Um, and then we will start paying monthly instalments. The, the, the cash tax in May will be uh, sufficient for our franking credit balance for our previous dividend. Any further um, monthly instalments for May, June, July, August, September, et cetera, will help to beat, build our franking credit balance up to a level where we will be able to fully frank our final dividend. The extent of which we don't know until till we um, you know, see what our profitability has been like, but it's been good so far. And I think peers, um, students will, uh, of a company will notice that we had $6 million of tax expense in our first half results, so our, our half yearly to December 31. So that's due um, in that window as well as the 10 million from the previous. So great question, um, gives you some uh, transparency uh, over where our franking credit balance may be. Okay, thank you. Um, we're almost out of time. I do have um, many more questions coming through. So uh, if anyone, if we didn't get to any of your questions today, please feel free to email them to me, Danica Warburton. Our um, email address is on the bottom of the announcements. Um, there's one uh, that I will ask, um, can you comment on the strip ratio this past quarter yeah. versus December quarter? <laughs> yeah, um, well, look, uh I think in our commentary, we've said that the that we've gone through a, a period of time of elevated strip ratio, um, uh, but that is again we gave guidance that that was coming to an end, and we would expect it to to uh, normalise back to close to the um, to uh, the life of mine average. So at some stages in December and January, it was up in double digits um, versus our life of mine average of three thereabouts it's now reverted back down to around about three and we'll uh and we'll you know it'll bounce around a little bit maybe up to four or five and then down to two but it, it won't go through that same elevated level of you know double digits like it was in december and january and you would have noticed you know some companies capitalize certain waste expense you know and smooth it out over the life of mine um we've done um 
uh, you know, we've just uh, expensed it as it's incurred. So uh, it means that that tough period as far as cash costs go are probably behind us as well. Okay. And I'm going to end on one uh, from an anonymous attendee. Uh, on the growth, on the growth, the, the with the expansion part of the growth plan, is Phoenix looking in Australia only or overseas opportunities also? Um, and I guess you touched on this when you were talking about the infrastructure that you've got. So perhaps... Look, I'll, I'll give John some air time um, <laughs> and let him answer that. But uh, I mean, we, we speak as a team as far as this goes. Yeah. Look, we've been really clear that uh, we're looking for synergistic opportunities. So uh, that starts obviously around Iron Ridge and the assets that we've mentioned, which not only are existing mine, but are joint venture haulage fleet, and most importantly, our port facilities in the Midwest at Geraldton. Uh, and the Midwest is a prolific zone. Anyone who's had any exposure to Geraldton or the Midwest recently will know that uh, there's a lot going on. You know, flying to Geraldton these days, uh, it's like flying to Port Hedland in terms of high vis on the plane, uh, the mining, the exploration of the development activity. So th th there's a wealth of opportunity for uh, a company like Phoenix to continue to look for opportunities to build wealth for shareholders around us. Um, and then, you know, that business plan, and when we talk about applying it elsewhere, uh, we have a small team, uh, we're, we're focused in the Midwest, we'll explain from there, uh, you know, it would be highly unusual to, um, uh, to step outside what is a very profitable uh, existing business, but there are opportunities everywhere and, you know, the, uh, uh, the company has potential uh, to, to build uh, operations in a similar format to uh, our operation in the Midwest, um, potentially anywhere. Um, but uh, clearly we're going to step from that, that uh, existing footprint uh, to one that provides growth. We'll wrap it up now because we've gone for half an hour. But um, as I said, uh, I really encourage all shareholders to reach out to us. If you've got any questions or queries or suggestions or anything that you'd like to say, um, please feel free to email them through. It's danica at investability.com.au. Um, and personally, we're, we're very excited to be involved um, with the company at this time. So we thank John and Rob for